Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now in life, just because you can do something doesn't always mean you should do it. And that's exactly what's happened in the case of this video. Now when we think of SLI, we may think of two GTX 1080s whirring away in a system and producing extraordinary frame rates, even at 4K resolution. Well, if you're expecting that, unfortunately, you've come to the wrong channel because as you know, here on Random Gaming in HD, we're all about budget. Sorry, I was just thinking my channel is such a silly name. Why did I call it that? <laughs> anyway, let's get into it because today I'm SLIing the unthinkable thanks to the help of a little software hack. Through a couple of days of research and a little bit of hard work, I've managed to put together two GT710s in a system and get them working in SLI. Now, who knows? what sort of performance impact, positive or negative, this will have in SLI supported games. But I want to talk to you today a little bit about how I did it, why I did it, and whether or not it's worth doing. We'll also be checking out the game performance of a few different titles as well. So without further ado, let's get into it and talk about the method I used to actually get this working in the first place. So I've read about this before and I've also seen an Oz Talks Hardware video about it where he SLI'd two GT 1030s I believe and then later on two GTX 1060s. All the information you need on the subject is over at the Tech Power Up forums which I will be leaving a link to down below. Now to get this right it's all about finding the perfect balance of drivers and software. For example the program itself, different SLI Auto, there are a few different versions of. With Windows 7 and with the two GT 710s I use the 1.4 version of different SLI Auto along with the drivers that you see on screen right now. Sorry, I couldn't remember the name off the top of my head. Now, this was a lot of trial and error. I actually used this combination beforehand to no real avail, so I had to reinstall them following a different set of instructions that I had done before, and there are no really clear-cut ways to do this. Although there are instructions listed, they don't always work, and you have to sort of try and find the method that's right for you. So, already... I know it's beginning to sound like it really isn't worth it, but it can be handy in slightly more powerful cards such as the GT 1030, 1050 or even 1060. But you know me, I just had to try it with the weakest set of cards I had in my inventory. So because I had to work this out as I went along, my installation and tutorial instructions here aren't really the most helpful, but I tried to write everything down and edit it as I went along and then tried to correct my mistakes. So if you want to try this for yourselves, this was the method that I found worked for me. And it was the only way I could get these two pair up in NVIDIA Control Panel. Now to check that these are actually set up, you have to go into the NVIDIA control panel and enable SLI, making sure that physics is set to the CPU, otherwise this won't work. At least in my experience, but as I say, every experience is completely different. As you know, the GT710s don't have a connection for an SLI bridge either, so this works simply through the motherboard's PCI Express slots, and of course with the software in combination with that. With the GT710 set up, it was time to see what they could do in terms of their SLI performance. This is probably one of the worst ideas I've ever had, but nonetheless, let's get straight into it. So the test system today is our now improved decade old machine from last week. It features a Core 2 Quad Q6600 and eight gigs of RAM. Old tech, I know, but the only motherboards I have at the moment that support SLI are Socket 775 ones. The Q6600 should still be enough to allow the 710s to reach their full potential. Speaking of which, these MSI low profile cards feature just 1 gig of DDR3 memory, a 954 MHz core clock, and MSI recommend a 300 watt power supply, though we'll be using a Corsair 550 watt one for both. With the 710s in place and SLI enabled, it was time to fire up some titles. I'll be showing you the gameplay with SLI disabled first and then with it enabled afterwards. I've recorded externally today as every frame counts here and I didn't want to hinder the performance in any way. 
So up first we have Far Cry 2, an absolute classic and one that ran fairly well even on a single GT710, though we did have to turn things down to medium settings. At 1080p, I think the game ran okay, averaging around 30 to 40 frames per second most of the time, though the overall average did exceed just over 40 frames per second, but I'll show you the exact figures at the end of this clip. I ran the in-game benchmark run because there are a lot of on-screen effects that really do affect how the uh, results turn out, so I thought why not run that, there's loads of explosions on screen, fire, things like that, and it should really give us a good idea of how powerful the GT710 is on its own before we pair it up with the secondary card. As you can see the total average was just over 42 frames per second. When we ran the cards in SLI using this little hack, the average frame rate of Far Cry 2 was rather significantly improved by about 10 to 20 frames per second. Although the maximum frame rate wasn't as high as the Solo GT710, we did also see an increased minimum frame rate as well, and I noticed that there was a lot less stutter. For the rest of the tests after this one, I'll be switching back to the average frame rate, 1% low and 0.1% low figures, so that you can grasp a rough idea of how the games performed in terms of stutter, as SLI can sometimes cause this. Next up, I fired up Call of Duty World at War, a game I haven't played in too long. I went straight into the zombies mode here, and as more and more zombies approached and appeared on screen, the frame rate did drop a little bit, and we did start to see numbers that dropped lower than 30 frames per second. On average though, we did get close to 60 FPS and it was a pretty respectable experience considering this 1GB DDR3 graphics card. Turning things up to high or extra um, would not be a good idea at all and this was definitely the best way to play. If you wanted extra frames then you could reduce the settings even more or you could add a secondary GT710 as I shall now demonstrate. As you can see, the frame rate is massively increased and we were seeing frames in the mid 80s. I stuck to the same zombies level, I tried to do the similar sort of things as I don't believe there's an in-game benchmark run for this title, but the game felt smoother, it was just a better overall experience, and adding that GT710, the second GT710, really helped to improve things as we got further into the game. It was quite a surprising result actually. Next up we play GTA 5, now the reason I chose GTA 5 is because a single GT710 does struggle with this game as you can see, however we had another problem, the Q6600 actually holds back performance as well, so we had to overclock it a little bit. At 3 GHz the game performs a lot better and the CPU doesn't max out as much, um, but I have to say that this is where GTA 5 really benefits. If you're running an old Q6600, I suggest overclocking your processor before trying an SLI technique like this. With the overclock, the uh, CPU usage did drop to around 70 to 80% instead, though the frame rate when switching between 1 and 2 710s wasn't all that different, if I'm completely honest, and you probably won't benefit from such a thing here unless your CPU is a lot more powerful, but even then I don't think you'd notice much of a difference. Finally we tested Bioshock Infinite on the opening level, with a single GT710 all was pretty well until we got out of the boat um, and approached the lighthouse. Here we saw frames starting to dip below 30 frames per second, and as we continued into the game venturing uh, into Columbia, uh, we did see a frame rate that sort of hovered around the mid 20s or perhaps low 30s but it wasn't a very pleasurable experience if I'm being honest. To really spice things up we enabled the secondary GT710 once again and did see a pretty nice improvement overall. I'm actually quite surprised again at how much of a difference this made and considering Bioshock Infinite doesn't max out the CPU there is more of an improvement to be seen as well. So there we have it, the GT710 in SLI. It's important to remember that this video was just for a bit of fun, but there's always a little bit of seriousness behind every video. And I have to ask now whether or not this was worth it. See, we did see a slight performance increase with a second GT710, and that isn't a bad thing. 
But is it worth going out and purchasing another 710 to add to your system as opposed to just going out and upgrading your graphics card? Well, probably not. To set this thing up, it does take a lot of time and a lot of effort, unless you've done it beforehand. It took me a couple of days to figure everything out, hence the terrible upload schedule here. But once it's done, it really is a fun little tool to try out. And it certainly surprised me, especially the difference that we saw in Far Cry 2, considering these are weak 1GB DDR3 graphics cards, and ones that aren't really intended for gaming. Now some of you may be asking, where's Fortnite? Games like that. Well the thing is, because Windows needs to run in test mode when different SLI Auto is running, you can't always run specific games. For example, Fortnite doesn't like the factor in test mode, it considers it cheating, so to speak. I think it's an issue with the Battle Eye launcher. Um, I haven't been able to find a workaround for that, so unfortunately there will be instances where you just can't play certain games because of the requirements of the tool itself. All in all, while it probably isn't all that worth it with low-end cards like the GT710, I just had to try it out to see what sort of performance difference you could expect. If you're using something like a GT1030 and happen to have a spare lying around, then it's definitely worth trying out to see what sort of performance increases you can gain. I'd recommend checking out OzTalks Hardware's video for that precise subject. Some of you on Instagram when I posted the uh, picture of me doing this earlier said, is this possible with the GTX 1050? Well, we will be trying that out at a later date. I can't let that question go unanswered. I want to see if the 1050 will SLI and how well it will scale in certain titles. So stay tuned for that. But as for this video, it's been a little bit different, I know, but I hope you've enjoyed it nonetheless. As always, thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Leave a like on it if you enjoyed it. Leave a dislike if you didn't. And hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.